What's up factory workers? In this video we're going to be painting our favorite mascot from across the Gundam universes, the classic Haro. This kit is a Build Divers release, but because I haven't watched Build Divers, I'm not sure what Haro's role is in that series. But we all know Haro from the classics, and that's more than adequate to justify owning this kit. It's a very inexpensive kit, costing only 500 yen. Though I did not purchase this kit, this is actually a Christmas gift from a couple of close IRL friends, T and V. I was pretty stoked when I received it and I committed to making a build video. So I thank y'all for providing me a new contract. <laughs> the factory LARP is so fun sometimes. Anyway, enough talk, let's get this build going. As always, I start by unboxing the kit. I am greeted by a single poly bag with two sets of runners and poly caps. The har is a bit smaller than I expected it to be, but for being a basic kit, it seems to have plenty of details. And in typical Bandai fashion, the parts are nicely molded. Being a small kit, the instructions come printed in a single sheet. The front is nice and colorful, and the rear is printed in basic black and white. I go ahead and proceed to build the little Haro out of the box. This was a quick build. I was having so much fun seeing the little Haro slowly come together, and before I knew it, I had blazed through the build so fast. Experienced builders will have no trouble straight building, panel lining, and flat top coating this little Haro in under 15 minutes. Oh my goodness gracious, that's so adorbs. Just look at him. Okay, that's enough of me gushing over the little Haro. The Haro Basic Green is just that, a basic kit, but Haro is a basic design to begin with, yet I feel with a little bit of paint and some hard work, we can materialize some of its full potential. I'm sorry for the choppy turning display motion. My usual motorized turntable gave up the ghost and I had to temporarily use my Tamiya rotating painting stand for this shot. I'm actually turning it by hand right now. I can't wait to see what a bit of paint can do for this little guy. But for now, we close up shop and get some rest. The real work starts tomorrow. First, I begin disassembling the Haro.
Next, I start prepping the parts by removing and filing away the nubs. While filing off the nubs on the base, I accidentally marred the plastic pretty bad. I took the time to wet sand and polish the part using 5000 and 7000 grit sandpaper. Next, I throw the parts into the ultrasonic cleaner with a dish soap solution for 10 minutes. This will fully clean and degrease the parts so the paint can properly bond to the plastic later. I blow clean air using an empty airbrush to hasten the drying time. And finally, I clamp the parts in alligator clips. For this Haro, I've decided to paint it with a candy metallic finish. As such, I will follow the Alclad's instructions and spray the base coat directly onto the plastic. I'm a bit worried because priming the kit with a surfacer can help reveal imperfections and seam lines that you might have missed, but this time I'm ditching the surfacer, so I hope it doesn't come back and bite me later on, but that's what the Alclad calls for. I sprayed the first coat on camera, but sprayed two more coats off camera to reach proper coverage. For the inner workings and the base plate stand, I chose an Alclad magnesium finish. Again, I sprayed one coat on camera and sprayed two more coats off camera to reach proper coverage. And here's the parts after allowing them to cure for one hour. Look how nice the metallic effect turned out. For the candy color, I mixed a custom hue of Alclad Candy Lemon Yellow and Candy Bottle Green. I must admit, spraying these candies was not the easiest for me. These require spraying down some relatively thin, yet still wet enough coats to prevent the dread orange peel texture. If you spray these candies too light, they will turn into a nasty gritty matte like finish, but if you spray them too heavy, you might cause a run. And on top of that, you must spray them evenly or the color will come out spotty and look gnarly. They require some finesse for sure. As such, I only recorded the first techie coat and sprayed 5 more coats off camera so I could keep a close eye on it. For the inner round plates, Alclad Candy Red seemed like a good match. I sprayed these with 3 coats. And after all that finessing, here's the result of that tricky spray work. I think they came out pretty good. I let these cure for 48 hours. These are the paints I used to paint the inner details. The inner workings is where this basic Haro kit really shines. I take the time to make these details pop by painting some contrasting gold and silver hues and complementing them with a nice red. These create a really nice part separation effect. For the eyes, I brushed on a wet coat of enamel silver paint, waited 12 hours for them to cure, then laid on some acrylic clear red paint to simulate the effect of red lenses. And this is the end result. I think it came out pretty nice. And for the final top coat, I chose Mr. Color GX Gloss Clear. Now, for some reason, I had a bad gut feeling about the top coat. I chose to spray a test spoon to see if the clear coat would interact with the candy finish I painstakingly applied, and it all seemed okay. So I went ahead and applied three coats of this clear coat. So far everything was going great, but then tragedy struck while spraying this piece. As I was spraying the final coat, I realized the paint was doing something strange. 
it started to dissolve and pool up. I knew something bad was gonna happen, and there it is. But I kept going and sprayed the rest of the parts with the top coat anyway. It was strange too because none of the other parts reacted, just that one. I don't understand. Maybe I got too greedy and I applied that final coat too heavy and it dissolved the rest of the layers. Anyway, I allowed these parts to cure for 36 hours. And here's the damage. You can see how the clear coat dissolved the paint. But it's so much work to reapply that I'm just gonna live with it. This was supposed to be a quick build anyway. But I am bummed out about it. And at last, we've reached the most rewarding part of the build. Final assembly. As I'm putting together the Haro, I can already see it's materializing right before our eyes. It no longer looks basic. The part separation looks good to my eye. It actually looks like a futuristic, sophisticated robot mascot by the late 70s standards, of course. I had a couple mishaps, and the paint is far from perfect. There might even be some seam lines that I might have missed, but for a relatively quick build, I am happy and totally satisfied. I hope y'all had fun watching the video. I'd like to thank y'all for sticking around this long waiting for me to put up a new one. And if you're new to the channel and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. The work shift is over. Thank you for your hard work. I'll leave you with the finished product and I hope to see you for the following shift on the next video.